Despite the pandemic, it's been a historic year for space exploration, particularly for China. From landing a robotic rover on the surface of Mars to collecting lunar rocks, China has definitely stepped up its game. And now they're also speeding up the construction of their nascent space station. Now the question is, is Tiangong actually capable of outpacing the International Space Station, ISS? Well, we will find out in just a second, but before that, please subscribe to Future File to watch more fascinating videos on futuristic tech. In April 2021, China launched Tianhochi-1, the first and main module of its new orbital space station, Tiangong, which means Heavenly Palace in Chinese. And exactly a month later in May, China launched Tianzhu-2, an unmanned cargo spacecraft that will help prepare Tianji-1 for the arrival of astronauts. The launch will be followed by a series of other cargo and crew launches to complete the construction of the station by the end of 2022. According to Zhu Jiangping, chief designer of China's manned space program, China's orbiting outpost will form a T-shape when completed, with Tianji at the center and two lab capsules, Wenxian and Mengxian, on each side. The space-based construction project will require 11 launches between 2021 and 2022, including the successful launch of the core module, two additional module launches, four cargo vessel flights and four manned missions. Or should we say three? That's because on June the 17th, China also launched its first crewed mission and the third launch of the total 11 launches for the construction of China's space station. This is also China's first manned mission in nearly five years. The astronauts soared into space aboard Shenzhou-12, a spacecraft that docked to the two modules launched earlier. The crew of Shenzhou-12 is scheduled to spend the next three months in orbit. After that, they will be replaced by a second crew of three astronauts. As the station is still under construction, the astronauts' primary responsibilities will be continue to build it, install equipment like cameras and test various systems such as life support and waste management. General Ni, the commander of the mission, says, We'll not only have to arrange the core module, the space home, but also to carry out a series of key technology verifications. Indeed, a huge step forward for China. However, is the same true for the United States, particularly now when the ISS is nearing the end of its functional lifespan? Well, that's arguable. The International Space Station, ISS, has housed more than 200 astronauts from 19 different countries, but none from China. Yes, China is not a member of the International Space Station, mainly due to US concerns about the secrecy of Chinese programs and strong military connections, which is why it has been a long-standing goal for China to build a station of its own. Quentin Parker, director of space research at the University of Hong Kong, says, The Chinese did want to be part of the International Space Station. This is actually a result of the inability of China to be involved in the International Space Station because of politics. But what it's had the effect of doing, actually, is spurring China on. I think they've done it very impressively, frankly. I suspect that America will actually develop its own capabilities and probably keep the space station going longer because it won't want to see China having the only game in town. It's practically technically capable of going on for another decade, no problem. It's just extremely expensive, he added. Launched in 1998, the International Space Station is now almost 23 years old. It was originally designed for a 15-year lifespan, meaning it should have been retired in 2013. Obviously, that did not happen, but the ISS probably will go away entirely at some point. As per the reports, the International Space Station ISS, is scheduled to be decommissioned after 2024 to leave place for the Lunar Gateway, a small outpost that will orbit the Moon. This is an international initiative part of the US-led Artemis program that once again has excluded China. However, until the Gateway is launched, Tiangong would most likely be the sole functioning space station. Some are concerned that this poses a potential threat, claiming that its scientific modules may be readily repurposed for military purposes, such as spying on countries. According to a recent report by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, the Tiangong is part of Beijing's brazen power grab. The station intends to gain the military, economic and prestige benefits that Washington has accrued from space leadership, with its apparent goal to erode the US military's information advantage. But it cannot be denied that things can also move in the opposite direction. China may take advantage of this opportunity to regain international trust and encourage partnership. This is especially significant in light of the recent accident involving China. Late in April, China launched the enormous Tianji core module of their space station into orbit using one of the world's largest rockets, the Long March 5B. 
While the trip was successful, China neglected to take steps that would have allowed the rocket's massive core stage to re-enter the atmosphere safely. Skywatchers speculated for days about where the rocket might crash. It eventually disintegrated and landed in the Maldives in the Indian Ocean. But while there was no evidence that its debris caused any harm on the Earth, China was heavily criticised for its chaotic and uncontrolled re-entry. So who knows, maybe China may use its new space station to reclaim the trust it has already lost. There are indeed hints that the country is trying to become more accessible, already announcing that Tiangong will welcome non-Chinese crews and science projects. Zhu Jiangping, the chief designer of China's manned space program, says, At this current stage, we haven't considered the participation of international astronauts, but their future participation will be guaranteed. I'm aware that many countries have expressed their wish in this regard. But while the country claims that the station can accommodate both domestic and international experiments, does it actually have enough room? Clearly no. Although Tiangong has been frequently compared to the International Space Station ISS, people engaged in its construction and development are quick to point out that the two stations aren't competing in one arena, in size. Gu Yidong, the chief scientist of the China Manned Space Program, says, We did not intend to compete with the ISS in terms of scale. Instead, the three-module configuration is based on China's needs for scientific experiments and what we consider a reasonable size for the sake of cost-effectiveness. Indeed true, sometimes bigger isn't always better, but the one undeniable advantage of a smaller station besides cost is that it can be completed much more quickly. Despite a few setbacks in the building of Tiangong, such as when a prototype failed to launch in 2017, China is still on schedule to finish the project by the end of 2022. The International Space Station, on the other hand, took almost 10 years to build. Well, that's reasonable if you consider the space station's size, which is roughly equivalent to the size of a football field. But unlike the International Space Station ISS, the Chinese station will be far smaller and more akin to the previous Soviet Mir space station in terms of both design and size. After all, it doesn't have quite the same financial backing as the ISS and it doesn't involve nearly as many countries. The International Space Station ISS, is the closest thing to the United Nations in space, with old friends Japan, Canada and Europe, and former Cold War enemies the US and Russia. However, sources indicate that Russia will soon back away from the ISS to pursue a national space station. On the 18th of April, it was reported that Russian Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Borisov told a meeting chaired by President Vladimir Putin, we need to honestly inform our partners about leaving the ISS in 2025. Later that day, Borisov's office clarified his remarks and backtracked from the date, saying, A technical inspection is needed, and then we can make a decision and inform our partners. But this wasn't the first time Russia had expressed dissatisfaction with the ISS. There had been many instances, but withdrawing now, when NASA wants to extend the life of the ISS until 2028, would make it extremely difficult to maintain the station operational without Russia. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson says that it would not be good if the Russians left the program. For decades, upwards now of 45 plus years, we've cooperated with Russians in space and I want that cooperation to continue, he added. Ultimately, space is both challenging and expensive. While it is a way for many countries to demonstrate dominance, cooperation has already proved to be more effective than solo endeavours. The International Space Station is perhaps the finest example of this. So, what are your thoughts on China's new space station? Do you think Tiangong will be able to outpace the International Space Station, ISS? And even more importantly, what does this mean for space security, science and exploration? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this next video on Starship's new floating launch pad that is shown in the end screen. See you there!